Hi all, this is VC from VC's Academy. Today I came with the concept of excretion in plants. So with the heading excretion and release of substances in plants. So what we will see in this lesson today. Excretion and release of substances in plants. When we think of this topic, we will get few questions in our mind. They are, do plant excretes like animals? How plants manage or send out waste products from its body? And why plants shed their leaves and bark periodically? So these are the three, uh, three important questions which will come in the concept. So we will try to get the answers for it. And we would be amazed to answer such type of questions when it comes to what type uh, method is used by plant for excretion or secretion and release of substances. As we are aware that a variety of end products are formed during metabolism and these nitrogenous wastes are important. So plants produce waste products uh, during their metabolic activities like various life processes which are happening. So those come under nitrogenous waste and these are very important for plants as well as for different medicinal use also and plants does not have specific organs to excrete these waste as humans have specified organs or various animals have various organs plants does not have any specific organ to do excretory process so what does the plant do the plants break down waste substances at much slower rate than in animals so if you compare the breakdown of waste materials in plants to animals it is at a very lower rate or very slow rate it happens and hence what happens accumulation of waste is, waste is also much slower so in animals if you compare the breakdown of substances is more faster and the accumulation also will be faster or more. Here the accumulation in plant or the breakdown of waste materials in plants is less in, um, in the rate of reaction. So there it is also slow and the much slower components are accumulated. Green plants in darkness and plants that do not possess chlorophyll produce carbon dioxide and water as a respiratory waste product see here green plants in darkness and plants that do not possess chlorophyll that means those are non photosynthetic plants they produce carbon dioxide and water as respiratory waste products and if you see oxygen itself is considered as a waste product generated through photosynthesis that exits outside through stomata of leaves and lenticles of stem. So what is the waste product generated through photosynthesis is oxygen and how it exits outside it exits outside through stomata or of the leaves and lenticles of stem. Plants get rid of excess water by a process like transpiration or guttation. So we have two terms here transpiration and guttation. I try to give the definition for transpiration. Transpiration is the process where plants absorb water through the roots and then give off water vapor through pores in their leaves. What are the pores present in the leaves? We call it as stomata. And coming to guttation, guttation is the exudation of drops of xylem sap on the tips or edges of leaves of some vascular plants such as grasses and a number of fungi. So waste products may be stored in leaves, bark and fruits in plants. The waste materials are accumulated or stored in leaves, bark and fruits every part can be stored when these dead leaves bark and ripe fruits fall off 
from the tree then the waste products in them are get and ridden off so uh, the waste materials which are stored in leaves bark and fruits after these become ripen and they fall off from the tree the waste products from them gets rid of waste gets stored in the fruits in the form of solid bodies called refides several compounds are synthesized by plants for their own use especially for defense many plants synthesize chemicals and store them in roots leaves seeds etc for protection against herbivores and we can see that plants synthesize chemicals and store them in roots leaves and seeds as a preventive mechanism against herbivores so as to not graze out and to self protect them from herbivores most of the chemicals are unpleasant to taste so the chemicals which are produced by plants for protection are very unpleasant to taste herbivores usually do not prefer to eat such plants as the smell is not acceptable and unpleasant herbivores will avoid such plants to eat some of the chemicals are toxic and may even kill the animals that eat them so chemicals are few which are very toxic and they are in condition that they may kill animals if they are grazed and some plants secrete chemicals when injured so when organisms get injured they will secrete clotting mechanism or the process of clotting takes place in such a way plants also has a mechanism these chemicals seal the wound and help the plant to recover from an injury as the clot will help here also the chemicals which produced by the plants due after having an injury would help the plant to recover from injury by sealing the wound some of the plants release attractants for the other organisms which help them for pollination seed dispersal or even in their nutrition so there is another method of plants which release some attractants for their further processes like pollination or seed dispersal or even in their nutrition process for example plants having root nodules secrete or secretes chemicals to attract rhizobia into the surroundings of the root and form a symbiotic relationship with the rhizobium so we will come with leguminous plants here the example is here very clear plants having root nodules secrete chemicals to attract rhizobia <coughs> into the surroundings of the roots and form a symbiotic relationship with the rhizobium <coughs> so the, these compounds are called secondary metabolites the biochemical substances produced in the plants are of two types so the compounds which are produced by the plants are of biosynthetic or biochemical process and these are of mainly two types they are primary metabolites and secondary metabolites the materials like carbohydrates fats and proteins are called primary metabolites we will discuss them in the further classes the materials which do not require for normal growth and development are called as secondary metabolites i will have a separate session for primary metabolites and secondary metabolites so what are the examples for secondary metabolites alkaloids tannins resins gums and latex are examples for secondary metabolites <coughs> 